a succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> We back in a schwip. I'm hungry. I'm also laughing about the last video where people were like, it looks hot out, but you're wearing a jacket, so it's making me hot through the screen. Am I making you hot through the screen? <laughs> Uh, but really though, yeah, people are like, he looks like he's physically hot, which is making me physically hot because it's supposed to be summer out where you are because it's summer out where I am. But what you don't understand about Canada is that even in early June to mid June, summer isn't that hot yet. And this is a very thin jacket. Also, it was nine o'clock at night. It was a nice day. The sun was out, but it wasn't that hot yet. So maybe let's call it 15 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit. I don't really know what that is, what that uh converts to but it's still not that hot it's just like a sp uh, uh 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 a springy folly day like it's not like the sun's there but the brisk is there you know it's iced tea in the air it's just brisk and it's not humid we're by a lake it's called lake superior it's a large body of water possibly one of the largest education about water bodies uh Yes, so it's not that hot, but anyways, I'm in the jacket again, and there's air conditioning, and there's radio tunes, but really there's hunger, and uh, part of me wants KFC, part of me wants Chinese food, part of me wants to go to the hot side of the grocery store and get like ribs and something that's already pre-made. I have no idea what I'm going to eat, and we'll find out the next time that we talk, probably. So I don't know, could be KFC... Could be Chinese food. Could be grocery store grub. It's a mystery box today. It hath been decided I shall reveal the Vietnamese, Chinese, dine-in, takeout, and delivery. Almond. I, so it hath been decided I went Chinese. We have a place called Asian. It's literally just called Asian. <laughs> okay, it says Oriental on the sign too, which apparently, are we allowed to use that term anymore? I don't know, okay? But I think at a time it was controversial. I did start at the grocery store. <laughs> I went into like the hot spot at the grocery store, you know, the hot to trot shit. It's like, it's already ready. And for some reason my head, like ribs would be cool and have just like a random hot side hot meal grocery store shit but they had nothing in there so then i left and then i parked in a parking lot and i was like a turkey club would be good but then i didn't know where to get that <laughs> and then i was like k kfc and then i looked at the kfc shit and i was like yeah that'll be boring and then i was like i really haven't had chinese in a while it's across the street so we go there and uh, I got myself a combo plate. I'm waiting for it. It's 10 minutes away. Well, probably about seven now. And uh, chicken fried rice, chicken balls. We got a couple lit cigs, aka Vietnamese spring rolls coming. And then I'm trying something new. I'm trying the uh, sweet and sour spare ribs. So I really hope they're not janky and jiggly and all that shit. Because sometimes the little riblets and spare ribs can be that way. But uh, I think they shall be good. So in seven minutes, we can eat. I can eat. We sort of eat together. It's, it's sort of mutual. Virtual, mutual insanity. Gotcha. All right, we got to bring in for the goods, of course, these Vietnamese spring rolls with the bubbly, crispy wrap and the pork glass noodles and all the stuff inside. Very, very nice. We're going to light some cigs with that cig lighting sauce. Right about here. Got a spare one in the back. And then the main event, the chicken fried rice. Got these sweet and sour spare ribs and a balsh. Go ahead and have a little pour over these spare ribbies. You know? And just like that. We'll go per dunk on the balls. Gotta go per dunk on the ball. <laughs> Always per dunking on the balls. All 
All right, y'all. He's splurging tonight. This is what $30 of Chinese food looks like. Now, I don't know if that's expensive where you're at, but here, $30 single plate, pretty standard. <laughs> Anyhow, let's go ahead and try one of these spare ribs first that I was kind of worried about in terms of their jiggly and if they're good or not, but we'll find out. Mm, okay, okay. Pork spare rib, not too much jiggle. Pretty good. A uh, no, we'll find out. They're attached to a very small piece of like gristle cartilage. So a little bit of, uh, you know, almost uh, savage eating, if you will, <laughs> right? Kind of a, mm, very good though. Mm. Actually really good. Nothing too crazy jiggly. I almost ordered crispy wontons instead. Have to try that next time. Also, I got the food. I opened it all up and I drove almost the whole way home and parked in a parking lot near my house in a little mall center with the AC on full blast. In hopes that this would cool down some. And it did, because am I the only one who likes most of my food? Like room temp? Good meat. I do like my food to come down in heat, so it's like so much more flavorful and enjoyable. There's actually a place right behind me, another Chinese spot called JJ's. I've heard good things. So that might be the next spot I have to try. Oh, my next Chinese crave. I can tell y'all one thing for absolutely certain. My eyes are roasted right now. They are so stressed because of the pollen the seasonal allergies are kicking my ass i feel like i just saw a dandelion fluff right here in the video there's literally like an onslaught A fluffy dandelion floating around through the air all day, every day for the past week, I swear. Mm. The rice is killing it. Splurged on himself tonight. but it's worth it. Mm. 
All right, the moment I'm sure some of y'all have been waiting for. Lightness egg. Usually it's the first thing I get to, but I wanted these to come to the perfect cool to enjoy them the most. One of the best inventions on the planet. These wraps. With that fried up interior. Divinity. Deep fried divinity. <laughs> All right, greasy crunch. I do, madam. <laughs> Whatever that means. All right, chicken ball. Feels like a perfect one. Mm. Amazing. I don't have a lot of shit on my mind today, really. <laughs> Other than I'm tired. And the allergies are kicking my ass. Also, I found a show called The Deep End with Teal Swan. She's huge on YouTube, like millions of followers. She's like a spiritual awareness health coach, like a mental health coach or some shit like that. Very interesting watch. Maybe some of y'all know who she is. Maybe you watch her. Maybe you're a fan. But she's got like uh she blew up on youtube doing these spiritual videos and now she has like a, a retreat where people you pay like five grand and you go work with her and her team in person and like release traumas and do shadow work and go deep on yourself for a, a variety of things purpose meaning people who are suicidal like all this stuff and it's pretty interesting to watch but the what's even more interesting is to see like the behind the scenes of her team and the dynamic of like how she's thinking about the business of it all and uh, people, there's people who love her and people who absolutely think she's like a psychotic, narcissistic, dangerous, like cult leader type vibes. Because she really has no doctoral, medical, anything, right? She's just a person who believes she has this guru level of awareness and that uh, she started making videos, she blew up, she got the clout, people really resonated with it. And um, now she's just her own practitioner of this essence of herself, really. She's just, it's her essence, her human, or her gifted essence of like, this is my understanding about things. She's been through a lot of weird shit though. She's been through five marriages. And she's 37, so that to me is a little bit of a red flag. <laughs> like, if you haven't had a successful relationship five times over, that would say a lot about you as yourself, like as a person, and how perhaps you're pretty damaged. <laughs> And maybe like you're a lot of your own problem, but she's 
she uh, she doesn't like to be challenged. She's very stubborn. And there's an instance in, I think, the second episode where a guy does challenge her. And she tries to, like, flip the script on him. She's like, there's no one in this world that's more aware than me. I am the ultimate awareness. Which is a little strange, but she was sexually abused. By... An older man when she was young, but he was like trusted by their family. And I think he might have been in religion. I don't know. She has the credentials because she's been through a bunch of personal hell. And I think she used to be like suicidal or she's had suicide attempts, maybe. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but. There was a whole thing where in her teens, she was like super messed up. I'm pretty sure she had suicide attempts. So anyways, people resonate, but she does like, she travels and does also huge conventions, essentially. She just sells out rooms and has people on from the audience to talk in front of other people about just like certain life struggles and traumas and things like that. And it's a psychologically interesting show and what she does is actually very interesting to me as well that being said i'm not like a stan of her or anything i'm not even i don't fan her like i just look at her at a very neutral level because a portion of me of me does hear a lot of what she says and she has a lot of good uh points and information and she does have a lot of awareness like observer consciousness kind of deal but in that same token she also seems like she can't be trusted she seems very controlling manipulative a little bit snaky a little bit inauthentic, a little bit disingenuous, a little bit out for the clout and the paper that comes with the clout. A little bit of uh, loves being center stage. Possibly some narcissism in there, but we all have, like, I mean, to be a human being, you're gonna have we all have a little bit of narcissism in us, right? It's built into the human experience. Just some people are extreme and take it super far. And the fact that she's not willing to be challenged or introspect and cherish things about herself would indicate that maybe but she would just say like we're not here to talk about me we're here to talk about you i've done all my work i'm i'm you know mentally sound i'm spiritually sound i'm fulfilled in my purpose i'm you know <laughs> and then she says outright She's like, in the documentary, or not the documentary, but the show. It's kind of a documentary, but multiple parts, episodes. She's like, I hate the self-help world. I never wanted to get into the self-help world. She's like, I basically hate what I do, but I'm called to do it. But I'm getting into the thick of the episode where there's there's this uh, like journalist lady investigating all these claims against Jill Swan of people who are like going to her made me worse 
more suicidal, more depressed. It ruined my life, basically. Um, and then there's, like, family members and parents and stuff. Like, my daughter or son went to her. And then they did take their own life. After going to her. Because... She has an open dialogue philosophy about suicide and basically is like ask people just bluntly straight up like she's like so why are you still here is there any reason for you to be living like she encourages people to be very truthful about their suicidal ideation which to me on <laughs> spilling rice all over myself which to me Honestly, I think it's pretty, you know, people want to stray away from those topics and, and, and tread on them lightly and tenderly, but I believe to allow to be fully visceral, open and raw about those thoughts and ideas is, I think, a good thing because it's just another one of those stigmas in society where people just want to bury it under the rug and treat it like, treat it with with this like fluffy approach when it's really one of the most intense things a person can really be going through in life. And to not access the true depth of those thoughts and feelings is to just say like, oh, we're not allowed to talk about that. Those aren't, that's not, like it's like, like it's not real. Like it's not happening. Like it's not going on for people. And I think that feels, makes people feel more alone, more isolated, more secluded. Like this is some taboo. Like we can't have an open discussion about why, I, why, you know, they, I, whoever, like the I, the all, the, the inclusive I, like why I feel this way, right? Like why that person talking about it feels that way. So I think open dialogue about strange, hard, harsh, taboo topics is a good thing, but a lot of people who are associated with a person who maybe took their life from after talking to her, they, they have like a vendetta now against her being like, you're the reason why they did this. Where you can never confirm or deny that, right? Like you can never... You'll never be able to, like... You'll know because the person took their life, so it's like, you'll never have that answer, but... You can't, like, prove that she influenced it. So, I feel like as the season unrolls, there's going to be, like, some legalities involved, because I think she's always being under attack. <laughs> from like a legal perspective as well. So, if you haven't seen it, it's a rather interesting show to watch. It's a little woo woo, it's quite woo woo. And they like, they channel, they channel spirits, they channel dead people into other vessels type thing. like. And you don't know what to believe. It seems like, oh, this is all bullshit or it could be real. Like, you know what I mean? And then they do like these regressionary sessions where somebody sits with somebody and they try to like kind of almost hypnotize and coax you into the past to bring out these like forgotten memories of trauma that you've been burying or repressing. And then people just have full on, like just shaking with anger and tears and, and, and just look like their head's gonna pop off type explosion of, of emotions and just screaming and shaking. Which is once again, very visceral, but it's real. It's people going through real shit that they've never been allowed to let out maybe they've done it at home privately 
but not something that they can publicly do in front of someone else or multiple people. And then have the group, like certain people in the group, they resonate with that person's trauma. They're like, that happened to me. And so then there's dialogue. So it seems healthy. In my mind, because in this society, we just bury everything. And if anybody wants to truly express their pain, it's like, oh, you're, you're psycho, you're crazy, you're out of pocket, you're, you know, just bury it, keep moving, don't work, like pop the med, sign up for the fucking, the, 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 the Pfizer cure, right? So pop the meds, zombie out, shut the fuck up, go to work, eat your pain, don't express it. And it's like, that's not healthy. That's not helping anybody. So her retreats are pretty cool in that sense. But at the same time, a little strange. All right, well, I'm out of sweet and sour sauce. I had two and they're all gone. <laughs> We all know that the uh, Vietnamese spring rolls are the best part for me. I'll tuck this away, probably have a little late night snack. So it's kind of like a meal and a half for 30 bucks, but that has satiated me for now. We'll put the broken lid back on, tuck in the spoon, do this. But we do have a fortune cookie to get to. We have to check our fortune crystal bottle. The eight ball says, unlikely you will succeed. <laughs> Hopefully the fortune cookie says otherwise. <laughs> Didn't mean to eat that. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. I'm headed in the right direction. And I need to trust my instincts. And like I said on my last video, the God first on only pen. My instincts to start a podcast <laughs> and just say it like it is from my mind and perspective and not give a hot fuck about what anybody has to say about it. Because what I learned is even on that video, there's always going to be a contrarian. There's always going to be someone who has a predisposition and not like me. And disagree with what I have to say, which is fine because, like I said, opinions, we're all entitled. Everybody gets one. You can view me how you view me. And that's it. I can't do anything about it. That's your problem. The way you feel about me, that's a you problem. If it's a problem for you. If you allow it to be a problem for you. But generally speaking... <laughs> When I personally don't agree with somebody or something, I don't take the energy in and become combative and like look for reasons to hate on somebody. I just go, I simply go, as the observer consciousness, I go, that doesn't resonate. I don't necessarily agree. Therefore, I don't engage because it's useless, right? You're not gonna, I'm not gonna change this person's perspective or mind or whatever they have their opinions and the way that they are. So I don't engage. And then I go use my, my energy and time to find things that I do resonate with that actually contribute to my growth and contribute to the knowledge and contribute to interesting my mind and learning things and whatever it is. I go over there and I like basically find my tribe and then I have constructive things to to engage with over in the space that I fit in um, if I don't feel that way about something I just let it be I move on because you actually don't have to I don't know if you know this but you don't have to be offended by anything you don't have to engage with anything that you don't like or disagree with because those are all conscious choices energetically so if you're reacting out of emotion that means your emotions control you. 
which means you're easily offended and it's just a lower vibration. When you have a higher vibration, a higher consciousness, you don't allow yourself to be affected by those things and you control your reactions to things, which therefore you control your energy and you control your emotions, right? That's observer consciousness. So I'll leave you there on that. But uh, yeah, until the next one, check out that show because it kind of touches on what I'm just saying now because Teal Swan has a lot of those gifts and abilities of the higher states of consciousness. And uh, eat good, live well, stay true.